Hello friends, it's Jim O'Rear. Welcome back to Jim O'Rear's Wacky World. Today, we are going to discuss something that I feel very passionate about, which is safety on the set of movies. Many of you know that I have worked for many, many years as an actor, a stuntman, a stunt coordinator on lots of movies. And a lot of those movies utilize a ton of different weapons, including handguns. And with the recent news that Alec Baldwin is going to be charged with involuntary manslaughter for the accidental shooting death on the set of Rust. Um, it, has, uh, it has stirred up a lot of controversy in the actors union on sets and things like that, uh, a debate among actors as to whose responsibility is it really to make sure that handguns are safe on the set because there are protocols in place that ensure that this does not happen. No one should ever be killed by a handgun accidentally on the set of a movie. It's ridiculous because it's a very strict set of protocols. It's not a hard to follow line of protocols, but it is, it's, it's set. And, and basically, if you're not familiar with it, I'll tell you quickly that there is an armorer or a props person or a firearms expert. They're called a lot of different things. You'll see different terms thrown around that is solely responsible for the guns on set as well as the ammunition. It is their responsibility to make sure that the gun is safe. If it's a prop gun, is it a, uh, you know, is it a, a real gun? Is it a dummy bullet? a charged bullet um, it's uh, it's their primary responsibility to make sure that 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 is safe and they are to give the gun to an actor who's going to use it on set just before a take is made or, or you know they, they they film the shot in the case of Rust, Baldwin was handed the gun and it was not handed to him by the armorer. It was handed to him by the assistant director, David Halls. And um, while that's not really protocol, it happens. It happens on, on a lot of sets where the armorer is going to hand it off to the, the assistant director. The assistant director is going to check the gun as well, make sure it's given to the actor. And when the actor's done with it, it's immediately handed back to the armorer, or in this case, it would have been the assistant director. Now, the um, there should never be a live round on the set. How a live round got into the gun, we don't know. How a live round got onto the set, we don't know. There's a certain protocol to follow. Was it followed? Maybe, maybe not. Investigation is still out. But um, in this case, they were setting up a shot in Rust just to rehearsal, just to get focus on where the gun was supposed to be. It was an insert shot, which is just a close-up of the gun. Now, when you take a close-up of a gun on camera, dummy rounds, if it's a revolver, dummy rounds have to be in the gun, or you can tell that the gun is empty. So, apparently, the armorer put dummy rounds into the gun, handed the gun off to the assistant director who handed the gun off to Baldwin and said it was a cold gun, which means the gun won't fire. <clears throat> the, in the first place, the gun should have never been handed to Baldwin for a rehearsal. Normally, on a rehearsal, you're going to be given a dummy gun just to hold because you're pointing it, you're moving it around, stuff like that. It's a dummy gun. Baldwin should know that. Um... But he took the gun anyway, um, took people's word for it that the gun was safe, which he says is a, uh, you know, is, is normal for him. He's just going to trust whoever hands him the gun. When that person who was charged with that job handed me the weapon, I trusted them and, and I never had a problem. I would never do that. Uh, as an actor, as a stunt guy, whatever, I'm going to make sure that the person holding the gun, that's using the gun, and everyone around him feels comfortable with the gun and knows that it's safe. 
So while the firearms expert can check it, the assistant director can check it, I want the actor to also know that it's safe and the actor to check it with me as well as the crew people. Um, that's not exactly standard protocol, but it's good to follow. And it happens on some sets, it happens, uh, sometimes it doesn't. And you would think with the death of Brandon Lee in a very, very similar incident that happened with a dummy bullet, um, that this would be followed much more strictly. In this case, not sure it was, and we're not sure exactly where the breakdown was. Was it the armorer? Was it the assistant director? Was it the actor? And Baldwin himself has addressed knowledge of, of knowing this protocol. That day I did exactly what I've done every day of, uh, on that movie. Which is what? Which is that there's an armorer there, and, and that word is new to me. In the years I've been in this What did you call it? It was a prop guy or woman. And the prop person would come and sometimes they would insist on demonstrating for you and the camera crew. They take the gun, if it was a contemporary gun, they show you the chamber, they show you the clip, they say, the gun is cold. And you look at it and go, thank you. And in the 40 years- Sometimes that would happen. Not all the time. Well, but no, no, sometimes they wouldn't demonstrate to me. Some insisted on demonstrating. They would do the demonstration for everybody there right before we rolled the camera or rehearsed. Then there were others who they didn't do that because I trusted them to do the job. So we know that Baldwin is familiar with the protocol on set to handle uh, firearms. And, uh, and we also know that he stated that he just trusts whoever puts the gun in his hand that it's ready to go. Is he responsible though? That is where the debate comes in. Was he negligent? Was he reckless? Uh, did he trust too much? I am under the feeling that he's partially responsible um, because of this. Now, I'm gonna show you real quick, uh, uh, for those that don't know how a gun works, um, how a gun works. And uh, <laughs> this, uh, so bear with me for a second if you know how guns work. Um, Baldwin says over and over and over again, I never pulled the trigger. Well, the trigger wasn't pulled. I didn't pull the trigger. So no. you never pulled the trigger? No, 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 no. I, I would never point a gun at anyone and pull a trigger at them, never. never. That was the training that I had. You don't point a gun at me and, and pull the trigger at them. I never pulled the trigger, is what he says. Um, but you don't have to pull the trigger to fire a gun. Uh, with a revolver like this, I mean, you can see that the gun is, is empty right now. Uh, no bullets sticking out. Uh, that's what I was talking about when you do a close-up for a gun earlier. If there's a bullet in the chamber, you can see it. Um, you know, it, it plugs a hole. So you can't do a close-up on a gun that, that doesn't have a dummy in it. Now, um, a dummy bullet is easy to tell. This is a real bullet. Makes no sound because it's packed with powder. A dummy bullet looks exactly the same, except it's empty and there's a BB inside. And when you do that, it rattles like crazy. You know that it's a fake bullet. It's easy to tell it's a fake bullet. Many of them also have a hole drilled in it so that you can tell. So regardless if there was a hole in it or not, you can do that and tell if it's if it's a, a dummy round. Now, um, now the way the gun works is w when the bullet is put in here and the hammer is pulled back, this is what actually strikes the bullet right here. Um, it's not the trigger. The trigger to me is it, it's a release. It's a release of the, of the hammer. So it does that. The trigger just lets the hammer go. The hammer hits the bullet, the bullet comes out. Now, Baldwin says again and again, like I said, I didn't pull a trigger. He does say though, that he pulled the hammer back and let it go. That's the same thing as shooting a gun. When you, when you do that, that's gonna shoot the gun. Now in this scene, I'm gonna cock the gun. And I said, do you wanna see that? And she said, yes. So I take the gun and I start to cock the gun. I'm not gonna pull the trigger. I, I said, do you see that? She goes, well, just cheat it down and tilt it down a little bit like that. And I cock the gun, I go, can you see that? Can you see that? Can you see that? And she says, and then I let go of the hammer of the gun and the gun goes off. I let go of the hammer of the gun, the gun goes off. So you have this cold 45, you just pulled 
the hammer as far back as I go without cocking the actual. And you're holding on to the hammer. I'm holding that. I'm just showing. I go, how about that? Does that work? Do you see that? Do you see that? And she goes, yeah, that's good. I let go of the hammer. Bang, the gun goes off. That's where, in my opinion, he got reckless, is that he pointed a gun and did it. Uh, that's, how, that's how a gun works. Uh, it's with the hammer striking the bullet, not the trigger. Interesting enough, when the gun was checked by FBI and it went through the, 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 uh, all, the, all the tests and things like that, they found that the gun was set up and modified so that you could not fire it unless you pulled the trigger, which means he had to have pulled the trigger. Baldwin's interview with Cuomo came as an FBI report revealed its own tests show the gun could not be fired without a pull of the trigger. Maybe he wasn't aware of pulling the trigger. I do not think that he had, that he was trying to kill this girl. I truly believe it was, it was an accident. I think he was a little reckless. But it, it, the FBI report says that you could not fire that particular gun without pulling the trigger. It's the way it was rigged, so he had to. Um, even if if that was the case, like I said, with the hammer pulling back, um, Baldwin admitted later on that he was aware that fanning a gun would cause it to shoot. And fanning is what you see in Westerns when they, when they go pop, 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 you know, and just rapid fire off by hitting the hammer. Alec Baldwin is doubling down on his claim that he didn't pull the trigger when cinematographer Helena Hutchins was accidentally shot to death. You say you never pulled the trigger, but the gun went off. Right. Baldwin spoke on a podcast hosted by former CNN anchor Chris Cuomo. That will right. not make sense to people. If a bullet comes out of a gun, they say, well, then someone fired You're it. You're familiar your with this did not come from me. This came from the DA's office themselves. You're familiar with what fanning a gun is. Have you heard of that phrase, fanning a gun? Yes, but explain So it. if you pull the hammer back and you don't lock the hammer, if you pull the hammer back pretty far, in old Western movies, you'd see someone fan the hammer of the gun. The hammer didn't lock. You pulled it back to an extent where it would fire the bullet without you pulling the trigger. He's acknowledged that he was aware that pulling the hammer back and letting it go would shoot the gun but he still pointed it directly at the cinematographer and the director and let the hammer go. So the Screen Actors Guild had a response that it is not the actor's responsibility to make sure that a firearm is safe. And while uh, I do understand that that uh, you know their guidelines are set forth for it to be you know someone else's responsibility, the armor or whatever. I I still feel that the actor should know if you are pointing a gun at someone that it it's still partly your responsibility to make sure it's safe. I trained with the police department. I trained with SWAT team, and I was always had it in it beat into my head that. You always treat a firearm as if it is hot and loaded and ready to fire, and you never point it at someone unless you intend to kill them with it. If this mentality would exist on a movie set, that would help because it gets you thinking. And SAG's uh, stance on it um, stirred up a lot of controversy. You know, SAG also said that it's, uh, you know, it would be the responsibility of the armorer, the professionals, um, and the producer that is responsible for the hiring of those people. Now, Baldwin is also a producer on the movie. What his producer capacity is, I don't know if he was involved in any of the hiring or anything like that. He is claiming, of course, that it was to be a creative uh, producer only. We don't know. Uh, they could come at him that way also. But uh, there were also a lot of actors that use, have used guns on sets and things before also that were very, very vocal about, uh, about their stance as well and this controversy. Uh, George Clooney was, was one of those. Every single time I'm handed a gun on a set, every time, Mark, they hand me a gun, I look at it, I open it, I show it to the person I'm pointing it to, we show it to the crew, every yeah. single take, you hand it back to the armor when you're done, you do it again. Right. Everyone does it, everybody knows it. 
so I don't know. You know, I'm going to wrap this up here uh, because we're going a little long. But um, personally, in my opinion, do I think he's responsible? Not solely, no. I do think it was an accident. I, I just think he's partially responsible because he knows how a firearm works. And he still pointed it at a person, pulled the hammer back and released it, knowing that would fire a gun. So he was reckless. Um, there were also uh, reports that the gun had already had two misfires previously in the shoot. So him being as a producer also should be aware that that gun had misfired before and had just made sure that it, it was either gotten rid of or that he also double checked it himself. Um, the uh, as far as responsibility goes, um, you know, and the chain of command, like I mentioned earlier, where you, uh, you know, the armorer hands it to the actor, but sometimes the armorer hands it to the assistant director who gives it to the actor. Was the assistant director at fault? We don't know, but David Halls, the assistant director, went ahead and pled guilty as part of a plea deal, uh, knowing that probably something was going to come down on him. Uh, and it also is expected and gives him the opportunity to basically testify against Baldwin and the armorer in this case. So kind of interesting that, uh, that David Halls has gone ahead and said, hey, yep, I'm guilty for uh, negligent handling of a deadly weapon. Uh, so it's going to be interesting. It's a very complicated case. Um, it's, uh, to me, I, 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 I am sick. I, I get sick, physically ill when I think about it, when I see things like this that, that happen because it should not happen. So it's going to be very interesting to see how this plays out. So uh, hopefully uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. I, I, you know, if it's like Brandon Lee and the Crow, probably no blame is going to be found. I don't know. If anyone, I think it's probably going to come down on the armorer, but we will see. So I hope you have enjoyed watching this video. If you have, click that like button to let the powers that be know that you like the video. And while you are at it, click on follow or subscribe, and you'll be notified when I upload new videos. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.